been a really interesting year. Obviously we're facing austerity, we've got a very uncertain political climate with Brexit and all sorts of other things happening. And we've got a range of cases that pick up on really core public law themes. So we've looked at cases that consider consultation in the context of service change, but also the obligations of public bodies when they're looking at setting budgets. And that's obviously a really topical question that all public bodies are facing in the era of austerity. A group of campaigners who challenged a decision by Dorset Clinical Commissioning Group. This was in the context of a very long-running service change programme that Dorset had been running. So it had a huge number of budgetary constraints and it needed to make a number of very significant changes to the way in which services were provided. The aspects of the decisions that were particularly challenged were the closure and consolidation of maternity and paediatric services. The um, issues that the claimants drew out were quite wide-ranging. So they questioned whether the CCG had properly considered the sufficiency of the social care workforce. They also challenged the adequacy with which the CCG had considered alternative options. There was also a technical challenge around whether they'd complied with NHS England's new bed closure test guidance, specific challenges on the travel times analysis and consultation. The judge also said that CCGs have a wide discretion as to exactly how the consultation should be carried out in the context of service reconfiguration and that the ways in which they carry it out need to be specific to the communities and to the issues that they're actually considering. One of our big themes is equality. It's been a really big issue that's come through all the cases that we're considering. And I'm also going to briefly touch on one that got a lot of media coverage, which was the Northern Ireland cake case. A bakery in Northern Ireland who refused to ice a cake with a pro same-sex marriage message on the top of the cake. And they were challenged on the basis that that refusal was discriminatory under the Equality Act and also on the basis of political discrimination. The Supreme Court held that the decision was not discrimination because it wasn't focused on discrimination against the individual in question, but the message itself. So the bakery gave evidence that they didn't object to the individual in question and his sexual identity. It was the message on the cake that they had a problem with and ultimately the court accepted that that was not discrimination. And on the political discrimination point, they had to weigh the bakery's religious beliefs against the individual's sexual orientation. And they held that both those protected characteristics were of equal weight, so one did not trump the other. We're also looking at access to information and how that can be used through judicial review to try and get around FOIA. So in this case, the Good Law Project what they sought to get were 57 sectorial studies that the Department for Exiting the European Union had about the impact on Brexit, uh, and also a Treasury report that analysed whether we would be better off after Brexit having independent free trade arrangements with other countries. The claimant framed his request in a way saying that he didn't want the Department to go through FOIA. The Department still did and said that it was required to do so by the law. This led to the claimants bringing judicial review proceedings on an urgent basis, essentially asking the court to grant a declaration requiring the department to release the information. The department said that the claimant had a suitable alternative remedy, which was going through the FOIA statutory process. The claimant argued that given the Brexit negotiations were due to conclude within 12 months, that it was so urgent that the FOIA regime couldn't accommodate that urgency. The court, however, rejected the claimant's argument. It found that Parliament had created a specialist statutory regime and the mere fact that the claimant had framed his request as a request under the common law did not mean that the government wasn't entitled to treat it as a request under FOIA. We're all looking ahead to see what happens with Brexit because that has significant implications for the public sector and for the healthcare sector specifically. Until we know what type of Brexit we have, it's difficult to really plan in a definite sense. Probably the main thing is keeping abreast of what's happening with Brexit. The government's produced a lot of what-if scenario planning guidance, which is helpful. There's a lot that our clients can do to make sure that they're in a good position and to make sure that they've identified the key risks for their organisation.